Several Oklahoma schools receive shooter threats. Police work together to keep the Norman community safe and how a farmer's market helps Oklahomans stay healthy. This is OU Nightly. Thanks for joining us for OU Nightly. I'm Grace Witten. And I'm Talon Forbes. We begin tonight with ten mo tense moments at four different Oklahoma school districts. In the past 48 hours, schools uh, in Edmond, Dell City, Yukon, and McAllister received threats and were either on lockdown or in some cases had class canceled altogether. Public schools in Yukon were closed today while police, state, and federal investigators looked into a social media threat. Tonight, we know two students from the district are in police custody. OU Nightly's Aspen Injuries has the latest. The Yukon superintendent and police say two suspects are being charged with terrorist threat by hoax for threats they made on social media. District officials were notified of the threats through screenshots a parent sent to the Oklahoma School Security Institute yesterday. Three people were brought in for questioning, but only two were found to be involved. We uh, have filed charges on two individuals. They are currently being processed in district court at the Juvenile Justice Center. The FBI and OSBI aided in the district's investigation. No motive or weapons were found, but the multitude of threats were enough for the district to cancel school. We were just not willing to put the safety of our students at risk for any reason and in consultation with the police department and again and my staff we just deemed that it was best today to cancel school and by doing that we also gave the police department the, uh, the flexibility to do what they needed to do without any outside distractions. District officials are currently gathering online resources to help parents and students have discussions surrounding online threats. Both juvenile suspects are being detained until they see the district judge in the coming days. In the meantime, UConn administrators are welcoming all students back with open arms and are ready to move forward. Reporting from UConn, Aspen Indris, OU Nightly. UConn schools are scheduled to be back in session tomorrow. We also know four, four schools in Edmond were on lockdown today after police say they received a threat by phone. Officers say someone called from inside Boulevard Academy saying they had a weapon. As precaution, schools in the area were on lockdown, but police found no credible threat. And in McAllister, 18-year-old Alexis Wilson was arrested for threats uh, police say she made by phone. Hi, uh, high school investigators say she told co-workers at the Pizza Inn where she works that she planned to shoot up the school and took pictures of herself with guns. She faces charges of making terroristic threats. McAllister schools will be open tomorrow. Police often say it is not a matter of if, but when the next mass shooting will occur. And with that in mind, OU and Norman police are focusing on how they might respond to such an incident together. OU Nightly's Abby Foster has the story. The, the focus from a law enforcement perspective is really stopping the danger. Norman and OU PD, two distinct police departments who are ready to work together to keep the Norman community safe. We actually do our training together. Um, some of our teams are combined. So our, our bomb squads, our hazardous devices teams, um, some of our bike team training, our collision reconstruction teams, um, our negotiators, some of our squad elements, those are all combined teams. So we actually have members from both departments on. OUPD is a full police department, so they receive the same training as other departments across the country. We uh, prepare for active shooters uh, by equipping our officers and arming our officers to the, the best that we're available to the best that we're capable of, as well as training. In 2016, an Ohio State University police officer prevented a possible threat. This is OUPD's goal if there was to be a situation on OU's campus. We have officers 24-7 out and about on campus, so there's a very good chance that uh, we would be in a similar position. When it comes to something this serious, if you see something, say something. A phone call to police could prevent an incident happening in our community. We can intervene ahead of time and try to prevent a shooting situation as opposed to having to react to it once it's already taken place. To report an emergency, call 911. To make a non-emergency report, call 405-325-1717. Abby Foster, OU Nightly. Police say they will investigate all reported threats and then determine what action should be taken. 
Norman police are asking for help locating a missing elderly man tonight. 92-year-old Robert F. Summers was last heard on September 14th. His family is concerned because he has medical issues. Summers is believed to be driving a 2019 Honda Civic. If you have any information on his whereabouts, please contact your local police department. It looks like there's a new tropical storm developing. Yes, and Bradley Weaver has more details. Bradley? That's right. We're looking live right now at Pleasure Pier in Galveston, Texas. And check out those waves. There's a lot of wind being picked up with this tropical storm. Right now we have wind of the southeast at 25 miles per hour, but back home we are not as hot. And Kayla Davis is in the News Center with the latest information on the Lewandowski hearing. President Trump, Corey Lewandowski, testifies in front of Congress today. The House Judiciary Committee asked Lewandowski about his orders from President Trump to tell then-Attorney General Jeff Sessions to reaccuse himself from the Russian investigation. He'd never asked you whether or not you had delivered that message? Not on multiple occasions, no. He, one occasion, okay? He did mention it on one occasion to you. I don't know if that's in the reports or and not. The White House limited Lewandowski's testimonies despite being summoned. And Saudi officials are saying the perpetrators of this weekend's attack on Saudi Arabian oil production facilities will be brought to justice. Now, the president was pretty clear yesterday when he pointed out the fact that he feels as though Iran uh, is likely the culprit of this attack. I mean, it was a global attack uh, on our, uh, excuse me, attack on the global economy. President Trump also says he's ready to defend America's allies. And exit polls in Israel show the election is too close to call. The current prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, is fighting for re-election after his plan to annex the West Bank. His opponent is former military chief Benny Gantz. Hopes are that the majority of votes will be counted by 7 a.m. local time on Wednesday. And Grace, legendary political journalist Koki Roberts passed away today. She set the standard for thorough political reporting and broke barriers for women in journalism. She was 75 years old. Thank you, Kayla. Our thoughts are with her family and colleagues tonight. Oklahoma is one of the top states suffering from obesity. Stick around to find out how a local farmer's market is helping battle this problem. Plus, an inside look on how one group is coming together to help kids in need. Obesity is on a steady incline and is taking lives day after day. Our health reporter Tevis Hillis has more on the disease and how to make a positive change. When it comes to healthy living, it can be hard, but the Norman's Farmer's Market wants the community to know how easy it is to find healthy choices. They say Oklahoma is a people place. Oh, there. That's it. That's it. That's it. But Oklahoma is lacking in health. We are the third largest state in the nation, and we have to combat the problem. And that is what the farmer's market is hoping to do. Every Saturday until the last one in October, people are encouraged to come out, buy fruits and vegetables, find healthy recipes, and to find a way to combat the disease. <laughs> Connie Thomason and her husband have been around this farmer's market together for 15 years. According to my plate, the government's idea for a balanced meal is that half of the plate should be filled with fruits and vegetables, and Thomason couldn't agree more. So, you know, the fresh produce is so much better for you, fruits and vegetables, and, you know, that's, that's no secret. According to Donna Talbear, an expert on training and keeping the human body healthy, she encourages everyone to start adding fruits and vegetables to their daily eating routine. Oh my gosh, that is what our bodies need to flourish. Um, it provides us with fiber, which we know for, especially with obesity, that's what helps us feel full. While obesity is a disease that is hard to fight, the farmer's market in Norman is hoping to make an accessible start. I think it's providing other options for individuals to be able to access uh, healthy foods, fresh fruits, vegetables. So if you're not busy on a Saturday morning, go to the farmer's market. <laughs> Sorry. 
Now guys, if you want to go and check out and you're not living in Norman, go to shapeyourfuture.com and they have information on all the great farmers markets around our community. Well, that sounds like a great deal. I'm definitely trying to get more into healthy living, so I will be stopping by there sometime Absolutely. soon. Absolutely. Yeah, we'll definitely have to check it out. Thank yeah. you. Yes. Awesome. Well, thank you, Tevis, for joining us. Thank you. After the break, we'll tell you how much money was raised by a group for kids detained at the border. We'll also let you know what this money means for those kids. And Bradley will let us know what weather to expect for the fair. That's right. I'm tracking rain chances for your weekend. I'll have more of my forecasts coming up. Welcome back to OU Nightly. We're looking outside live right now. Just a couple of clouds out there for you. Right now it is currently 91 degrees. We have a slight breeze out of the south southeast at 13 miles an hour. But the biggest story today is Tropical Storm Imelda. Right now, it is still a tropical storm. It has winds of 40 miles per hour, and it's moving its way towards the north into Houston and Galveston, Texas. Now tracking out Imelda, as it moves further into the north, it will weaken. It'll be about 30 miles per hour by early Thursday morning, and then eventually weakening to 25 miles per hour by Thursday afternoon. Now, how is this going to impact our rain chances? Well, we'll be relatively dry as we go into the later part of the week. Just a couple of scattered showers for your day on Thursday. But watch out for Friday morning if you're planning on heading out Friday morning. Keep this in mind. And throughout the day, we will see some scattered showers develop along uh, central Oklahoma. Now, this is going to also impact your weekend uh, fair plans as these scattered showers persist throughout the day on Saturday. Now, if you're planning to head to the fair, the best day to do so might be on Wednesday. It's going to be partly cloudy. We have a temperature of 91 degrees, so you're going to want to stay hydrated. And we have those winds out of the southeast at 5 to 10 miles an hour. Now, if you're planning to go Thursday or Friday, keep in mind that those rain chances do exist, but they're mostly going to be for scattered showers. And a cool down, I say that lightly, a cool down for Friday at 85 degrees, and those winds still out of the south southeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Now looking at your lows tonight, 71 is your low tonight for Norman. It's going to be a little bit above average for this time of the year. Our normal being 63 degrees with that wind out of the south at 5 to 10 miles an hour. Highs tomorrow are going to be back up into the 90s. 91 is your high for Norman. A little bit warmer out towards the west, 93 for Woodward and 93 for Guymon. Now it's going to be still hot tomorrow. We will cool a little bit for your day on Thursday, but check out those rain chances throughout the week. We're going to increase to 40% for Saturday and then into the start of next week, we are going to be increasing or those rain chances will be persistent throughout the week. Now I was planning to head to the state fair on Saturday, but it looks like I might need an umbrella now because the rain chances are increasing. Yeah. yeah, I was planning to go to the fair on Friday. I mm. did not know it was supposed to rain. Yeah, those rain chances are going to be there. It's going to be mostly for scattered showers, but I think that it should be fine if you were to go. Just have an umbrella or a rain jacket handy. And rain boots. Yeah. Don't yes, forget you might rain need boots. rain boots. Yes, puddles are a thing. <laughs> that is true. You know yes. what? I honestly will probably take the rain. It's been pretty hot recently. Mm -hmm. I feel like this rain may help, you know, cool down the weather a little bit. It may be a little yeah. more humid. But, you know, I'm going to enjoy this fair no matter what. Right, yeah. exactly. And as we head into fall, we are going to cool down. Not as much as some people might want, but it's still a cool down. And anything compared to 90s, for yeah, sure. I'm very glad to see the highs dropping into the 80s, for sure. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Bradley. Mm -hmm. Thank you. A group of Native American women is reaching out to help Native American and indigenous kids in need. They call themselves the Auntie Group. This past Sunday, they held a fundraising event in downtown Norman. There is plenty of fun and games to go around. The Auntie's first project is to use the money they raised to send food to children detained at the U.S.-Mexico border. We were able today to give a $10,000 check to the Regional Food Bank of Oklahoma, who are our partners in getting food to the migrant children at the border. And so every dollar represents four meals. And yeah, so we gave the food bank 40,000 meals today, and we are so, we could not be more pleased. The aunties are planning future fundraisers and are also discussing a possible trip to visit children at the border. And in sports news, the Sooner football team has a bye week. Shannon Earhart has more. Shannon? Yes, they do, but their defense on Saturday was memorable enough to last for weeks. Speaking of memorable, our former QB1 had a th quite a night last night, so don't hold your breath because sports is next.
Welcome back to OU Nightly. I'm Shannon Earhart, and it's time for sports. Now, don't put off the Cleveland Browns because they are back. Baker Mayfield led the team to a dub against the New York Jets with help from his sidekicks. Odell Beckham's one-handed grab and Nick Chubb's 19-yard touchdown run put Baker and his boys up 13-zip. But the play of the night was when OBJ showed out on his old turf. 89 yards. Browns win 23-3, and Baker loves his new co-star. He's very talented. He's going to make plays um, wherever the ball's at. I think that's the most special thing about him is, you know, the unique ball skills. When the ball's in the air, uh, he's going to fight for it. Eli Manning is going to be enjoying the view from the bench since Daniel Jones has replaced him as starting QB. It should be no surprise that Pat Shermer has decided to give the rookie a chance, considering how the Giants have started off their season. Giants fans hope that Jones can give off the offense the spark they're missing. And the Sooner football team gets a break this week, but that doesn't mean they're just sitting around. Join Parker Thune to discuss the team's focus as they prepare for the conference play. Parker. Thanks, Shannon. Now, it may seem odd that a team with a point differential of plus 108 through three games is continuously harping on the fact that they're unsatisfied with their performance, but the Sooners realize that in a peripherally weak Big 12, there's almost no margin for error. Now, despite the coaching staff's continuous push to improve, the Sooner players haven't lost sight of the fact that they've improved drastically since last year, especially on defense. After a historically poor season in 2018, the Sooners have rebounded to force five turnovers and allowed just 59 total points so far here in 2019. Everybody here works and, you know, whoever's time it is to go in there, we know they can do the best of their ability and, you know, hold that same standard to, you know, as any starter that's in there. So. Adversity is going to hit us, you know, at times. You know, we understand that. And what Coach Grinch preaches to us really is to set your jaw, get lined back up and just keep swinging. Now, as the Sooners prepare to put the pedal to the metal in Big 12 play, first up is a showdown with Texas Tech right here at Owen Field on the 28th. Now, lest we forget, the Red Raiders gave Oklahoma all they could handle last year in Lubbock before eventually succumbing 51 to 46. That Tech team went just five and seven last year, so forgive the Sooners if they're not taking anything for granted, even with an extra week to prepare. Shannon, back to you in the studio. Thanks, Parker. The OU women's volleyball team makes their way down to College Station today to play Texas A&M. Their six-match winning streak proves that the Sooners are not messing around. With the women riding high from this weekend's Invitational Sweep, the Sooners should be hyped for the 6:30 matchup. And back to Monday Night Football, Brown's wide receiver OBJ seems to be a little confused. And honestly, I don't blame him. His question in Spanish was clearly not what he was expecting. Come here. Well, anyways, you guys, I don't know Con how I would be able to talk in Spanish. ¿Qué significa venir a este estado y sacar la victoria? As, is... as you can see, I took Spanish for like two years and I was so bad at it. So I give him props for knowing what he was saying. You know, I give him props as well because I took Spanish for like two years in high school, two years in college, and still I don't think I could hold a conversation. Yeah. I would try, definitely, though. Yeah, I like the effort, but... <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you, Shannon. And the 2020 Oklahoma Teacher of the Year has been announced. Stay with OU Nightly to find out who won and why. I'm Sinclair Jacobs at the OU Nightly Update Desk. Pittsburgh Pirates closer Felipe Vasquez has been arrested on a felony count of soliciting a child for unlawful sexual conduct and giving obscene material to a minor. Governor Stitt named Judge John Kane to the Oklahoma Supreme Court. Kane is a registered Republican currently serving as a district judge in Osage County. This will be Stitt's first appointment to the state's highest court. That's it for now. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Sinclair. Who is the 2020 Oklahoma Teacher of the Year? Deer Creek Middle School teacher Gina Nelson. The English teacher has taught for 14 years, two of those years spent at Deer Creek Middle School. She speaks about her rough home life, saying that she teaches to give what was given to her a chance. 
And just another quick look at the weather. Taking a look at this weekend's weather, it looks like those rain chances will start to increase and that's going to infect your state fair plans if you have any plans of heading out and that's pretty much about it. We just have rain chances up until the weekend into the start of next week. You know, well, maybe those spring showers are starting a little bit later this right, year. Right, exactly. Thanks, Bradley. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching OU Nightly, brought to you by the Gaylord College of uh, Journalism and Mass Communication. We are live weekdays every day at 4.30. We'll see you back here tomorrow night, live at 4.30. Have a great evening. Good night. What was with the ending of the